the sheriff and I are here to talk about some information um, that's going on in our community right now. Anytime we have something um, that we find extremely important, disturbing, very seldom will you find the sheriff and I stopping what we're doing and going and doing a presentation at the same time. A lot of our jobs requires us to go two different directions. Today is not one of them. I will tell you that we are responsible for about 36,000 people in Huntington County. Does anybody know where the most important place is right now for us? Right here. Because a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today is fact affecting each and every one of you, or could affect each and every one of you. Now, I will tell you, with us being here, I'm going to ask just a couple of things for you. This is a serious topic. There's no reason at any point in time you should, you should be jabbing your buddy over some of these topics. There's no time should you be laughing over any of these topics. Okay? And I'll be honest, I have a vested interest in each and every one of you. My daughter goes here. My daughter's going to continue to go here, and so is my son. I know many of you, and I care deeply for each and every one of you. And I know I speak on behalf of the sheriff as well. So while we're here, please pay attention and listen. Can we all promise to do that? Yes. yes. Oh, that was we for you. Can we do that? Yes. Much, much, much better. All right, let me just see a show of hands real quick. How many people in here have a smartphone? Awesome. How about, how many people in here have an iPad or a Surface or some sort of tablet, a Nook or Kindle? A lot of people. How about a laptop computer? Probably everybody, right? How about a home computer? Technology is changing, folks. It's gaining momentum every single day. The technology that you guys have with you right now, especially these smartphones, just an example, and some of the teachers will be able to relate to this. Six years ago, the sheriff, when he was elected, had a flip phone. Anybody know what a flip phone is? Yeah. How many people have one? Very few people. It's just an example in six years how quickly technology has changed. And as a result of that, look at the information on the internet and social media that you have right now at any given point, any given day. Internet, social media is a lot of fun, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I use it every single day. But there's a lot of dangers that comes as a result of that. And there's a lot of bad people out there that take advantage of kids just like you who does understand some of those dangers. And that's one of the things that we're gonna talk about. If you can see up here, what we're going to talk about is inappropriate content and online um, privacy. That's a lot of what I'm going to discuss with you. Uh, the sheriff's going to talk about sexting, unwanted sexual requests, and cyberbullying. Now, as we talk about these things, and I talk a lot about the internet and social media, and he talks about things on the phone, each and every one of these are compatible with one another. So what I'm going to talk about has just as much bearing on what he's going to talk about. Okay? So keep that stuff in mind. You're probably like me. Another presentation. I get it. How many people, when you got your computers and stuff, probably had some more sort of talk with your teacher about the do's and don'ts of using your computer, right? Absolutely. And this is another example of that. And you guys may know a lot of this stuff, and this may be a refresher. A lot of this stuff is common sense, but sometimes we have to be reminded. Because the things that you may think you know are different from what I know. In the law enforcement field, I see and I hear a lot of things, okay, and it scares me. There's a lot of bad people out there, and you'll see one in a minute that we call him a creeper. Those are the bad guys, okay? There's, I got a few examples as I do my presentation. These examples, pay attention. Um, this just has to do with some unwanted sexual requests. This is from a teenager. Uh, who exchanged phone numbers with the man she met online. He then began texting her suggestive photos, ultimately blackmailing her for some more personal information. If you don't know who a person is online that's communicating with you, don't get in a phone conversation with them. Don't start texting with them. Only allow people in your lives that you know who they are. Again, there are bad people out there, and all they want is more and more information. Some inappropriate information. There's a football player. How many football players do we have here? Awesome. 
Uh, 17-year-old girl was helping, oh, let me go back. Uh, 17-year-old girl was helping uh, her grandmother count a lot of money. Okay? She posted a picture of the money online. Two men then broke into the house and stole it. Again, something that was very seemingly innocent and fun turned into something bad. Again, bad people doing bad things and taking advantage of you. How many people in here use Instagram? Awesome. How about Twitter? Not so many. YouTube? Yeah, YouTube's a big one. How about Facebook? Snapchat? There's a lot of social media platforms, many of them, I'll tell you already, even up here, and I'm learning more and more every single day in the information that you can share on these things. But there's a lot of dangers that come as a result of using those. As we go through this presentation, you're going to learn what you can do to keep yourself safe. And it's not just you. Again, it could be the person sitting next to you. It could be a family member. Okay? You guys are all smart kids, and I get it. But somebody may go do something really crazy and stupid, and you may be the only person that can save them. Save them from getting yourselves into trouble with somebody else or with us. First, you've got to know some of the behaviors that are going to get you into trouble. These are the things that we are seeing right now with kids that are getting them into trouble. Um, they're sending me and rude messages. Once you send that stuff, guys, it don't go away. It's still there. Has anybody ever heard of the cloud? Does anybody in here know what it is? I'll be honest with you, I have no clue where the cloud is. But all the information that you put online and on the internet and you share through your cell phone goes there. And anything that you try to delete, your history on your computer, the things on your cell phone, it's still there. I'd be happy to help any one of your parents to get that information at any point in time if they wanted it. Our detectives use it every single day. Other stuff on here, adult subjects. We see a lot of kids talking about adult subjects that they shouldn't be talking about. We also see them visiting adult sites, pornographic sites. I've talked to kids and I've interviewed kids when they've got on these sites and they think that once they visit it, as long as they hit that delete button, the way it's going to catch me, my mom and dad will never know. But did you know every time you get on one of those sites, it's recorded? It's recorded on your computer, it's recorded in that cloud, and it's recorded on those social media sites like that. All I have to do is click a few buttons on my computer at work and I can share that information with your parents. There's no such thing as deleting stuff. You guys have got to remember that. If anything else you take away from this presentation between the sheriff and I, just remember, once you post it, it's always out there. It never goes away. So in the recent studies, because of social media, there used to be a time where I think all of us shared a lot of emails. That's how I got a lot of my information when I go to work every morning. I get emails. Now, because of social media, it's become the number one, three to one, over uh, emails on how information is shared. So much so that most people, when they want to know what's going on, say, what happened in Fort Wayne? You heard something in Fort Wayne. They're jumping on social media sites because you're going to find out your information there. Even if you don't know somebody in Fort Wayne, somebody's taking a picture or videoing it, and they're sharing it. And then somebody else is sharing it. And next thing you know, hundreds of people have it, and everybody's sharing it. And just to dispel something real quick that I saw on Facebook, because I know Facebook a lot. Anybody know about the clown thing? Oh. I want to tell you right now, it's bogus. Okay? Somebody started that out as a prank and a joke, and now other people are just putting masks on and parading around and trying to get their, their five minutes of fame on social media. Okay? So just know that. There's nothing to it. I put it on here. Just for information, how many people in here, mom and dad, actually know you have a social media site? Good, I'm glad. But there's some ages up here. I, I'll read through here if you want me to, but I think you guys are all smart enough to kind of figure out what age you have and what social media uh, platform you're using. But you can kind of see those are the ages that you're supposed to have. And to sign out of those sites, you have to agree to the terms that you're those ages. If you don't, it's against the law if you use it. There's a lot of benefits to using social media. I use it. 
okay? I love taking pictures of my family. I love using Facebook. But I only post happy stuff. I love sharing the information, okay? How many people, when they go on vacation, like to take that picture and share it with everybody else? Yeah, how about a birthday? If you have a birthday, or your new baby brother or brother sister, maybe you got something really cool new. We take pictures of them, we share it, right? It's a lot easier to do that with a few of your friends that come to school and maybe share it with two or three. It's become the number one platform to share information, and it's great. You know, I recently attended a school uh, in Quantico, Virginia. I met 266 guys. I was with them for three months. I got to know them really well. Became some of my best friends in the whole world. But once I left there, I thought I'd never see any of these guys again. But because of social media, because of the internet, and Facebook specifically, I get to talk to these guys every single day, and I'm still part of their lives. So there's a lot of benefit to the social media stuff, but there's also a lot of dangers. You gotta know who's peeking at your stuff. Every time you post stuff on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever you use, somebody's always looking at it, right? The 60 friends that you may have that you want to share this information, if you don't have the privacy settings right, your 60 just became 600, and then 6,000. Okay, we'll talk about some of the privacy settings here real quick in a minute. But you gotta remember, everybody's watching this stuff. Some of this stuff, do you want your mom and dad to know you're posting it? I talked to a lot of kids who say, ooh, I didn't think about that until I got in trouble. This is where common sense plays in. A lot of times, if you're going to post something, you get that gut feeling. Anybody ever get that gut feeling when you're just about maybe you do something wrong? You're like, maybe I better not do that. Yeah. That's our subconscious telling us uh, what you're about to do is wrong. Always listen to your gut. Your gut's going to guide you in the right direction 95% of the time. All right? Now, if you chose to do it after that, that's up to you. But I can guarantee at the end of the day today, after hearing me and after hearing the sheriff's spoke, you'll never be able to look at your teachers or your parents or anybody ever again and say, well, I didn't know. Because you're going to hear it today. Okay? Don't post things if you don't want it to come back and haunt you. I use an example sometimes when I'm talking with kids. Don't say anything that you wouldn't say loudly at church. If you're not willing to stand up in the middle of church on a Sunday morning and scream it out, it's probably not worth putting on Facebook. Am I right? The information that you share on Facebook and Instagram, we'll talk about in a minute. If you're not willing to share that information with a, a row of our inmates, and we have 136 of them right now, if you're not willing to share that information with them, don't be putting it on Facebook. There's reasons. They're bad people, right? <laughs> bad people are what's looking at your uh, social media sites. Again, a lot of universities. How many people in here uh, want to go to college? Yeah. How many people want to make a lot of money? Yeah. Everybody wants to make money. I will tell you that more and more of these universities and some of the grants that they're handing out, they are going online, looking at your social media posts and your history to find out who you are. They're seeing all the good stuff you post. They want to know all the bad stuff you post. You want to see if they're going to be a good person or a bad person to be at that university. It could be the deciding factor whether you get in or get any grants. Okay? Just stuff to think about. Oh, also, we use social media. Our detectives all have profiles through Facebook, and they get in, and they try to see who will let them in to their private lives. If somebody hits you up as a friend request, and you have absolutely no idea who they are, it doesn't matter how many people that they may know that are friends. If you don't know them, don't let them in. Because all they're trying to do is pry into your information. Okay? And there are privacy settings in Facebook, Instagram, all of them have it to say friends and friends only. If you're going to have those platforms, make sure you get with your parents. Make sure that you only check your friends. Again, that could be 60, but if you don't check the right thing and you get friends of friends, or you open that up, information up to everyone, that's the difference between 600 and 6,000 I was talking about a minute ago. I like that guy. 
Is he ugly or what? This is an example of the people that are on the other end of that computer that are paying attention to your social media sites. Okay? Security, there's no such thing. We talked about the, the settings. Please go home tonight, you guys that have these uh, social media sites. Get with your parents. Find out where those settings are and make sure those settings are safe to make sure that you're secure. Okay? Third party apps. Those of you who ask Facebook in here, who experience Okay. Facebook, you know those, those games that are on there? Those video game people have absolutely nothing to do with Facebook. They pay Facebook to be on there. And it looks like a lot of fun, right? I see a lot of people playing them. But what people don't know is, to get on and play those games, sometimes you have to enter your name, your address, your phone number, your date of birth. If it's a free game, why do you have to enter that information? Okay? What they're doing is they're taking that information and they're selling it to other companies. They're selling it and their kids are finding out, adults are finding out when they're playing these games that they've had a car loan opened in their name. They're finding out they now have a credit card issued in their name with all their information. The other thing that these things are doing is creating a backdoor into your computer. You may have all the safeguards in the world on your computer. But once you open these sites and you start playing them, they can now have access to your entire computer, your family's computer. If you have passwords on there, and just as a side note, don't put your site or your passwords on your computer. Write them on a piece of paper and keep them home somewhere. Because they'll get in, they'll get your passwords, and now they have access to every single thing that you have. How many people in here have cameras on there? Probably most people. Those back doors create windows where they can open up those cameras and watch every single thing that you're doing. At my home, I have a piece of tape right over that camera. I don't want anybody opening up, just in case. And a case in point, um, Apple. We all had a lot of Apple products. Apple stores, we downloaded stuff, games and whatnot. This is what something that personally happened to me. Um, one of my kids, and I won't name which one, yeah. <laughs> that uh, when she was younger, there was a video game that she wanted. It looked like a lot of fun. I read the reviews, it was exciting, and I thought, hey, that's not a big deal, it looks great. You know, it was recommended for kids under six. What's the harm? So I let her have it. She's playing that game for a while. One day we're sitting on the couch, and I see her typing. I'm thinking, since when did we start typing on these video games? And I said, who, who are you talking to? I don't know. So I took a look at that computer, sure enough, because of that app, somehow it was a communication website, it was a portal. She had no idea who she was talking to. It was somebody that was asking her name, where do you live? Information that never should be asked. So I had to call, I did call Apple and they removed the game. That's one of these examples. These, some of these things may look simple, they may be fun, they may be inviting, Pay attention to what's happening in there because people, bad people, are using them to get information about you. TMI. What's it mean? Shout it out, TMI. Try. <laughs> How many people that have the social media sites now that you are hearing some of this stuff may have shared maybe too much information? You don't have to hold your hand up. That's fine. I don't want to embarrass you. I want you to think about what you probably already posted, the things that are online. Because what I see a lot of times is people treat Facebook and Instagram like a telephone conversation. How you doing? Hey, Mikey, I'm doing great. What are you doing this weekend? Hey, I'm going on vacation. Well, can you come over when you're done? Maybe next week? Oh, we're still going to be gone. We're going to be in Florida. Okay, that's great. That's fine. What would you just tell everybody out there? You're not going to be home. You're going to be on vacation. So all these bad guys out there that are burglarizing homes, did you just give them an open window? Absolutely. But did you do it innocently? Absolutely. You can't help but think that the phone out that the conversation that you're having with somebody else can be taken badly because it's happening. So if our burglaries that were happening in the county, it's happening as a result of this stuff right here. How many people like to take selfies? Come on. Yeah. I know all you guys. I see it. You guys are all taking selfies. I know better. 
What happens with you if you go to Florida? Again, a fun thing. We want to share with everybody. We go to Florida, we take that selfie, and we're posting it. Goes on Facebook, and we tag it, Destin, Florida. And we do that three days in a row. What do we just do? Again, we just told people we're not at home. Come from the house. Also be aware of what you're taking pictures of in your surroundings. When you're taking pictures in your bedroom, it sounds simple, it sounds innocent, but you're giving pictures of your entire bedroom inside. Your window, the layout of your bedroom, the layout of your house. If you take pictures throughout your house, again, look past the picture, look past yourself. Look what's behind you, because you're telling these people exactly what they need to know. Your security alarm system, where your windows are, do you have dogs? It's telling you too much information. So just be aware of your surroundings. You know what? We're all guilty of it. You're all going to be guilty of it at some point in time. But pay attention to it. And now, any of you guys who post this stuff, you friends better call them on it. And say, hey, did you realize you just posted all this stuff on here? And what I saw in the background? Okay. This is just an example that I put on here. That guy on the left is any one of us. But you got to be aware that somebody on the other end is watching. With a microscope, everything that you do, everything that you say, you can't get away from it. The internet's fine. I love it too. But somebody's always watching. Personal information, your password, your home address, all of this stuff. You've got to be careful what you're posting. Again, the bad guys are out there and they're taking advantage of it. I think I got some examples. Here's just a few examples that's happened. A uh, 14-year-old uh, girl posted about her birthday party online, uh, only to have, again, this is where your settings come in handy. She invited eight people. She had 800 people show up. They caused $48,000 worth of damage to the house. How would you like to explain that to your mom and dad? Not me. Another one, there was a team playing a game on Facebook, which asked her to fill out a loan application for extra points. She was contacted by a car dealership because they just she just bought a new car. Again, something to think about with some of these games. <laughs> like with anything else, a lot of stuff comes down with common sense. Your passwords is the gatekeeper uh, for everything. Don't use your date of birth. Don't use your social security number, your phone number, your address, your initials, your favorite dog, or your favorite chihuahua, your chihuahua. Don't use that crazy stuff because these bad guys. So the first thing they're going to go after is your personal information and try to hack into your accounts. Okay? Do something really weird. Big numbers, little numbers, crazy stuff. Just don't use personal information because that's what they go after first. Nobody's immune to getting into your computer. Yahoo. We all heard of Yahoo, right? Biggest, one of the biggest internet places out there with share of information, emails and whatnot. They just got hacked recently by somebody. And now hundreds of people's information is out there because of it. So nobody's immune to it. But you can't safeguard yourself a little bit. Inappropriate content. I wouldn't put this stuff up here if it wasn't really happening. Drinking, drug use, for whatever reason, kids like to brag on that stuff and think it's funny. And I'll tell you every one of these things. Hate speech, lewd and offensive gestures, profanity, revealing suggestive images. The sheriff's going to talk to you about that in a few moments. And threats. Every time you do something like that, whose attention are you getting? You get my attention. Because every single one of those is a crime. Especially when it comes to kids of your age. Think about those things. Keep yourself safe. The sheriff's going to go into a little bit more on that here in just a few minutes. Posting things like that can ruin your reputation. Your reputation is all you have, kids. Right now is a starting point before you get up to high school. Your reputation is going to be key. It's going to be what carries you through your adult life. And it all starts. We, I never had to deal with this social media stuff. But it's getting worse and worse and worse. So as we're sitting here talking, please, please, please keep this in mind. Lastly, I'm ending my part. I'm just getting you with these last few things. Anytime you post stuff, think about who I might hurt. How could this impact my future? Do I like what this says about me? Could this get me into trouble? And with the adults in my life, I think this is appropriate. Again, 
two things. Anytime you post information, one, it's going to be nasty. Would you say it in church? And two, if you're going to put personal information out there, imagine we've got 136 of our inmates sitting right here where you are. Would you want them to know your date of birth? How about your social security number? How about your mom and dad's name and your address? How about the layout of your bedroom? No. But unfortunately, we'll put that information out there for everybody to see. Keep those things in mind, guys. Our job is to keep you safe. It all starts with you. Thank you very much. Sheriff's going to take over. Before I get going, I'd like to have my two girls and my two boys come down here. Chris and I were sitting around and we were putting this presentation together and, and we kind of kicked around this idea. And, and I think this is a real good way for you all to see how stuff really works. I just imagine that they're a mile apart, they're at their houses or, or whatever, but they're really not close together. So we got a little skit right here that we practiced a little while ago, and I'll let you get started. I can't believe we're actually dating. I know, it's off the hook. I've been waiting for so long. Same. Oh, I have an idea. Hello? Hey, if you send me a selfie, I'll send you a selfie. Will it be just between me and you? Yes. Let me think about it. Should I do it? I don't know. You do whatever you feel right. Okay. Hang on one second. Send. Oh, I got it. Hey, Brecken, look. Hmm. You send that to me. Send. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh. Whoa, look at that. I got it. <laughs> Whoa, I just got it. Hey, boy, what are you doing that? Hey, look at this. I got it, too. Oh, my God, I got it, too. Whoa, I got one. I got one, too. Oh. All right. First of all, give them a round of applause. Like the old Chinese proverb said, that's the way to cook the problems. Okay? That's reality right there. I can't tell you how many times people have come into our offices and sit down, parents that Chris and I know or we know through the community say, like with her head down, you're not going to believe what's just happened to my daughter. You're not going to believe what's just happened to my son or a group of friends. And it's just that, just the same story. Um, it's real, it happens here in Huntington. I would tell you a long time ago, when the flip phones were popular and they were just had the camera technology, uh, I was standing at one of the North High School basketball games. Somebody came running up to me and knew me and wanted to, like, oh, everybody likes to tell the police stuff and be on their best behavior. He said, I just got this picture. Am I in trouble for having it? And I said, what are you, I mean, what are you talking about? What do you have a picture of? He opens his phone and there's a picture of a cheerleader that's standing in front of me, cheering for Huntington North without any clothes on. Okay? I, I didn't send it to anybody. I didn't do anything, but I've got it on my phone right now. What do I do with it? said, well, I need to get a hold of the school administration and we need to go that end and the police end. Um, so it's really all you need to know about the, the case, that it was real and it happened. And I will tell you that that picture was shared amongst a lot of boys in the high school. It was even told to me that one of the boys took that and it went someplace in Fort Wayne and had a poster made of that and had it put in his garage. I think they found out the police knew about it and were coming to check and it, it disappeared but where it went, who knows. It still could be out there today. I don't know. I will tell you there was a lot of humiliation with that girl and she soon became a uh, cheerleader of the war and they ended up moving out of Huntington County because of the embarrassment. Okay? Those are real things that happen because of a simple mistake. Uh, I will tell you the definition for sexting is 
just sending, in a, you don't have to make it real hard. It's sending inappropriate stuff over your phone, the internet, Facebook, any of the social media sites that the chief is talking about. That's sexting. It doesn't have to be a selfie. It doesn't have to be a picture. Sexting can be a group of words that mean sexual things and give you the idea or a, a point you in a direction of something that's not nice and appropriate. That's sexting as well. It can be pictures, words, it can be all of that stuff. So I just, this morning when I was getting ready for work, Good Morning America, there was a brand new case out, uh, broke yesterday, 13 year old girl wearing boxer shorts, no top, her hair was covering her front, took a selfie, sent it to the boyfriend, the boyfriend moved it on, uh, the police were thinking about charging her for pushing out child pornography, because she's technically a child. The prosecutor doesn't know whether they're going to take that case yet or not, but she could quite possibly have to register as a sex offender for the rest of her life. Because she took that picture, pushed it out to the boyfriend, the boyfriend's in trouble too for pushing it on out, and now a lot of people have that selfie. And charges may be brought against this 13-year-old for what she did. Wow, for the rest of your life. It didn't just hurt her reputation, she may have a criminal charge that she has to answer and register the rest of her life. That's awful sad. I'll bet when she took that selfie, how are you doing? You laugh, it's okay. She never thought one thing about that. She was thinking about a relationship with her and her boyfriend. And that was it. That was the scope of her vision. Um, it's real simple. Uh, they don't really get lost. They do in the iCloud like the chief was talking about. Nobody knows what that massive computer network is, where they're all at. Um, can get passed around like we just saw with all the different people standing up saying that I got it. And a little later on in the presentation, it can be used to bully them. We'll talk about that. They can be used to blackmail you. There are cases, not in Huntington that we really know of, but where selfies get sent out to somebody that is impersonating themselves as a teenager, uh, some exchange are made, you're not getting pictures of really who's on the other end of it, but your picture's real enough, and then pretty soon they're using it against you to do other things. More pictures are even sexual favors. So uh, it's a human trafficking segment, but we don't have time for that. Um, I am like the chief, you know? Don't take a picture of yourself that you wouldn't want everybody else to see. If you can take a picture of yourself with your little brother as he just won a kickball tournament, fine. That's good. You can share that in church. Um, don't forward anybody else's image. You can't stop what comes to your phone. I know that. I get that in the computer. At the point in time that you move it on down the road, that's when you're in trouble. Okay? That's when you're in trouble. Um, and obviously, if any of this comes about in your computer, you see something like that, you make sure you talk to an adult immediately about it. I don't care whether the adult is here at school, uh, your counselor, at home, maybe your parents are busy. Uh, I don't want you to talk to your little brother about it or little sister about it. They're not going to be much help. Talk to an adult. What now? All right, so it's happened to you. You're going to have to file a complaint. Uh, let's just pick on Facebook. Somebody's put some stuff on Facebook about you that's not true and it's inappropriate and, and you can't get a hold of reputable companies like Facebook and Snapshot and some of those things like that. You can get a hold of them and they, you can have it removed. There is a process. I know people that have had that done. Um, make sure that they're gonna, you're going to have to verify to them that, that you're who you are. Your parents will have to get involved. So again, it's back to the adult. Um, Unwanted request. Look at the guy over here to the right. Look at that guy sitting there. Now that is gross. Okay? That's who you can be talking to. Alright? You're going to get lots and lots of people that have nothing better to do to sit around behind their computer and eat and eat and eat and eat and pump information out and try to get information from you. Alright? It's unbelievable. And why do we do this for? Peer pressure. A force felt upon you by people about your own age. The problem is, is these aren't people about your own age. There's a lot of sexual predators out there. I will tell you that the FBI comes to Huntington. The FBI comes to Huntington three or four times a year in three or four black SUVs, big black SUVs like you see on TV with tinted windows. And 
they'll pull them in front of the residence and they'll kick a door in and they'll go in and remove all the computer stuff and take the people with them and they're federally being charged for child pornography. Okay? In Huntington, Indiana. Okay? I get to clean up that aftermath because the neighbors call it and say, what were the SUVs doing there? We watched them kick, we were in the yard working, they kicked the door in and they took them out and they took their computers, and now they're gone. Child pornography. Okay? And quite frankly, those people were probably talking to people in New Jersey, California, it wasn't just Huntington people. So by the same token, you have people in New Jersey and California and all over the country that have tentacles reach all the way to Huntington or anybody that will communicate with you. So it's really, really important that you read, like Chris was telling you, unless you know them and you're your, your friend, don't communicate with them in any shape, way, or form, especially in the selfie stuff in the middle of the second stuff. Okay, you have the right to say no to an inappropriate request. What's an inappropriate request? Somebody raise your hand. What's an inappropriate request? Talk real loud. Like asking for body pictures or something. Body pictures. Okay, good. That's an inappropriate request. An inappropriate request, request might be asking for pictures of just private parts in particular, not, okay. nothing else. That, that could be. Okay. All right, inappropriate. Boys and girls, is anything that makes you feel uncomfortable? It's like that little gut feeling Chris was talking about, your conscience talking to you. If it makes you feel uncomfortable and you know that your mom or somebody that's taking care of you standing over your shoulder would say, what in the world? That's inappropriate. Shouldn't be there. Shouldn't be doing it. How to respond? Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to block, you're going to unfriend them. You're going to report that behavior to somebody immediately. I don't mean your little brother or sister can't. Talk to an adult, all right? Talk to an adult. Uh, if it's really bad, you're going to talk to the police department, all right? When an inappropriate request goes too far. Um, these guys and gals, girls do it too, they get really good at what they do. So they try to groom you. What's grooming? Someone that flatters you, says nice things, maybe they know your self-esteem is a little low, so they try to build you up and pick you up and make you feel good about yourself. Oftentimes they can say they're going to send gifts to your house, give me your address so I can send you whatever it is that you're talking about. Maybe you want to watch a Harry Potter series and they say, oh, I've got it, I'll give it to you. All you got to do is give me your address and I'll mail it to you. You don't realize that that dials you right in on their radar, okay? They ask you to keep secrets. Anybody that asks you to keep a secret on the internet, that's bad. Period. Really bad. Obviously, the, the images and uh, the blackmailing. Um, okay. It's not your fault. We all go to school. We eat, we sleep, we play with everybody do lots of neat things and, and, and interact with our parents and we have a full life. I don't expect you to be 100% savvy on the computer on what's going on or what to do or what not to do. I, I get that. A lot of it's new for you. A lot of it's still new for me. These people on the other end of it though, that's all they do 24-7. How am I going to trick this person? How am I going to get this person turned around? How am I going to win them over? Not your fault. You've got some really good people out there to get at what they do, and uh, it's really bad stuff. Uh, you don't engage them, you block them, uh, you don't meet them offline, and you don't tell, or you tell an adult uh, that you can trust. All right? We had an uh, incident here not too long ago here in Huntington where a um, 16 year old girl thought she was talking to a 17 or 18 year old boy. Uh, wanted to meet, innocent enough, meet at a local uh, coffee shop here. Uh, so they go to the coffee shop, she gets there, this guy's about 32 years old, okay, 32 years old, all right? She doesn't know what to do, she's overwhelmed, that sick feeling in her stomach, she's got it, she knows it. she needs to leave, okay? What we think probably happened is, is that guy followed her, she pulled in her driveway, and he just drove on by. 
because she started getting stuff at her house. All right, stuff mailed to her, some cars. So now you know where she lives at. Does this sound like a guy that you want stalking you? Because that's really what it is, a stalking. All right. Report any of this stuff that we've just talked about, that these horror stories that I told you about. You've got to do something about it. They can't take care of themselves often. A lot of times we have to get involved in it. Um, the cyber tip line is, is right there where it is, the lost. Um, you can do it that way. I would say that more than likely um, it's going to be a lot quicker. If there's a problem, immediately we can resolve it through the police department. If you live in the city, you call the city. If you live in the county, you're going to call the county. And we can get the ball rolling, get you pointed in the right direction a lot quicker. It's a problem. I don't want you waiting for a little time to get to you because there's a lot of them going on across the United States. Your local police department as well. All right? All right. Cyberbullying. It's a huge problem. Um, how many people in here have seen uh, in the last 10 years, and I know you're not real old, but 10 years, uh, the unbelievable school shootings and the mass destruction and all the bad stuff that goes on with people that are bad to show. And a lot of times it's, it's the kids within the school. Okay. All right. A lot of that stuff started off with cyberbullying. Why is cyberbullying easy to do? Because it's easy to hide behind something and throw a rock and know that nobody's going to hit you back. All right. That's cyberbullying. You hide behind your computer and oftentimes you can get away with it create new profiles, uh, you can provoke somebody else to say something mean about somebody and have them push it out, and, and you just, uh, just keep stuff moving. Uh, they can create hate groups about somebody. That's happening in Huntington. How many people know or have heard about something like that right here and know about people that have created stuff or say mean stuff on the internet about people? Okay. And I think you know, we have a real accurate count most of everybody would raise your hand. All right? Post mean comments online. How many people have ever seen that or that? Okay. It's all right. That doesn't mean you're doing it. You just know about it. It happens. Photoshopping. There's all kinds of apps out there now that, that you can make people look all distorted and funny and tongues and ears and all kinds of stuff. Spreading rumor or gossip through text messages. Uh, the stealing the identity, and I think the chief talked about that. That's nothing you really have to worry about too much. Um, you don't pump that information out there so somebody creates an identity for you, but um, they're targeting more people who have their credit cards and stuff like that. <coughs> you guys really just need to worry about the rumors and the gossip and, and slams and put downs and um, things like that. Um, I will tell you that there's an old saying, sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will never hurt me. I don't know who made that up, but that's not true. Names do hurt people. People do have feelings. And nobody likes to be put down. Uh, what it does to them makes them have low self esteem, feel lonely, uh, out there by themselves. And sometimes, not a lot, but sometimes even where they want to hurt themselves or suicidal. There's stories uh, that I could get off the internet right here where they were somebody was cyber bullied and then there was a girl in Minnesota not long ago that took her life at the beginning of the school year because of mean things that were being said. So words really do matter. Believe that. So if you see this show up on your computer and somebody saying something about somebody, um, name calling, uh, maybe the kind of clothes they wear, or just generally just being hateful, you don't respond back. Okay? You block them. Uh, if you have to set up a new account to get away from them, do it. You know, I, I would like to think you wouldn't have to go that far. I'd like to think that you could talk to somebody about that and make sure there's no reason for you have to change your lifestyle to your accounts. Uh, but if it's somebody you don't know and you have to do that, fine. Uh, make a report. Tell the principal, uh, vice principal, or the athletic director here. Uh, they're wonderful people. I've known them for all my life. They will help you. They'll point you in the right directions. Um, document what you see, uh, don't encourage bullying, um, stand up for the victim. Boy, and I'll tell you what, I really, really like this one, standing up for the victim. Um, you know, I can remember back to school when people we didn't have phones, obviously, but we got picked on and mean things were said. And I really, I'm proud to say that I was, I was in that group 
that a lot of times reached out and helped kids that were getting picked on. Uh, back in when I was growing up, if you didn't wear Levi's and have Puma shoes on, people said mean things to you. And you know what? It doesn't matter what kind of pants you wear, what kind of shoes you wear. Um, people are people, all right? And it was a very wrong thing for those people to do. So I'd like for you to be able to get to my age someday and say, I was one of those guys or gals that stuck up for somebody that really needed help and needed a friend. Tell you what, you can't go to Walmart, you can't buy that. Okay, so it's going to be earned. So just remember that as you're taking your journey through life and, and get up to that high school level. All right? So don't be a part of it. It's kind of a repeat. Um, if you do have a comment and you do agree with something that's maybe not going on, it's right. Keep it to yourself. There's no reason for you to. It's like smoking a barrel. Let's put the forest fire out before you spread it even further. Okay. You don't, you don't forward anything, rumors are embarrassing photos, you know that. You can almost be criminal, depending on the age of the person. So I'll give you a warning about that. Uh, treat others with respect. Create a positive online environment. Be careful about what you share and cyberbullying. Again, it's just doing the right thing. Be positive when you're on there. If you have something negative to say, just keep it to yourself. Right? Don't put it out there. There's no such thing as a secret. Ever. Come on up here, Chris. I'd like to thank you very much.